Lissa Productions. Okay, welcome back to Experimental Physics. We're setting out on a series of investigations of the behavior of a mass spring system. And before you try to draw any conclusions about whether your experimental measurements agree with the theory or not, you want to be very sure that you've made your measurements as carefully as you possibly can. Just to recap, we are studying free oscillations of a mass spring system, and the theory predicts that the period of oscillations is 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. So the measurement of the period is crucial, and a standard laboratory procedure suggests that you should make sure that your instrumentation is calibrated. We're going to add in ahead of this part one on free oscillations, let's call this part zero, timer calibration. So we'll go through a routine that ensures that the timer that you're using is well calibrated, or if it isn't, then you'll be able to make some adjustments based on the calibration measurements to be sure that it really is uh, giving you the right time measurement. The photogate timing device calibration routine involves the use of a digital function generator whose purpose is to provide a very precise, very accurate time signal to trigger the device. So we turn this on and it goes through a self calibration routine and it should say test passed and then default to the frequency display. So what we've got here is a frequency of one hertz, which is precise and accurate to a microhertz, a part in 10 to the sixth. That's a good calibration standard to use for the timing device, which will give you the time to a part in 10 to the fourth. So we want to calibrate with a known time standard that's much more precise and accurate than the timing device that we're going to use. So what we'll do, this is a good physics device, and it requires that you tell it not only the number, the frequency, but you also have to tell it the units. So right now we've got a frequency of one hertz. Suppose we want to change this to 1.2 hertz. You just punch in 1.2, and then you tell it what units you want. The choices are megahertz, or kilohertz, or hertz. Now for this purpose, the frequency range we want is hertz. So we just press the bottom button here and that becomes 1.2 hertz. Again, precise to a part in 10 to the sixth. Now what this does is to produce a sine wave, a uh, varying voltage that drives this little mechanical speaker membrane. So the speaker membrane is forced up and down in response to the signal from the function generator that in turn moves a little opaque flag up and down in the path of the photogate timer. So the next part of the procedure is to be sure that this oscillating flag is moving with enough amplitude to trigger the device. So let's turn on the function generator. And this time what we want to use, we set this to the pulse mode. What that will do is to trigger the timer on the first interruption and stop on the second interruption. So we've got an opaque screen that will just be periodically clipping the beam and uh, causing the timer to trigger. So set it on the pulse mode. What we need to do next is to adjust the height of the photogate so that it's actually triggered by the flag that's oscillating. So we'll loosen the screw on the back and slide this down until we just begin to see the flashing light triggering on top of the gate. So that's the right height. Now if the gate is too low, of course, the light will be on all the time and that's not going to be useful. You want it to be triggering periodically in response to the function generator. So that's a good height. Now. The amplitude of this can be set using the amplitude button. So we'll press this button right here. 
I have it set right now at 10 volts peak to peak and you'll just watch what happens if I don't have the amplitude set high enough. Let me set this to 1 volt peak to peak. And now the flag is not moving with enough amplitude to trigger the gate. So it's important not only to set the correct frequency, but also to have sufficient amplitude. So amplitude 10 volts peak to peak is a good amplitude. So now that we have everything working properly, let's go back to the frequency. We're driving it at 1 0.2 hertz. With a frequency of 1 hertz driving the flag, we should get a period of exactly one second. So you should measure 10 times at each of several different frequencies. And let's just make one measurement. So we'll press the reset button on the photo gate timer. And it looks like the frequency is uh, of 1 hertz is giving a period of 1.0012 seconds. We'll do this a, a few more times just to get a sense of the reproducibility. That's 1.004 seconds and 1.005. So just uh, do that 10 times and this time it came out a little bit less, so random fluctuations. Uh, one thing to note about the apparatus is that the timer might be a little bit unstable on the tabletop. So that might introduce extra uncertainty if the photo gate jiggles a little bit when you press the reset button. To kind of minimize that, you might want to hold the timer base down tight onto the table and press the reset button carefully. And that will tend to be a little more reproducible to keep it from bouncing around. Now one last thing to let you know about, sometimes the function generators slip out of calibration a bit. And if that happens, you shouldn't worry, but let me just show you what happens when it does. This one is not exactly calibrated, so it goes through the self-calibration routine and it comes on and says test failed. What that means is simply that instead of being good to a part in 10 to the 6th, it's only good to about a part in 10 to the 5th. But that's still plenty good enough to use to calibrate the photo gig timer, so don't worry. Um, the other thing about the failing the test, it doesn't come on to the last frequency that was entered into it and the last amplitude. It comes on with a default of 1 megahertz and that's not very useful. So if your device comes up with the test failed, then you'll have to enter the frequency of one hertz and set the amplitude to 10 volts peak to peak uh, just to get it running properly. But otherwise it should be just fine. And that's all you need to know about uh, calibrating the photo gate timer.